Good afternoon. We'll be leaving for North Carolina in a short while. I think some of you will be outside. Uh, tremendous crowds in North Carolina, tremendous crowds everywhere. But we have a very important group of people standing alongside of me. I'm honored to welcome Pastor Andrew Brunson and other survivors of religious persecution to the White House. We're grateful to be joined by Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom, Sam Brownback, former governor, as you know, as well as Pastor Paula White, a tremendous religious leader and a friend of the White House, a friend of the presidency, and a friend of the president. With us today are men and women of many different religious traditions from many different countries. But what you have in common is each of you has suffered tremendously for your faith. You've endured harassment, threats, attacks, trials, imprisonment, and torture. I got to know many of you and helped you get some get some of you out of the difficult situation that you were in. I'm very proud of you and the way you've reacted to a different life is a tremendous thing. Your families are very proud and our country is very proud and your countries are very proud for those of you that aren't from the United States. Each of you has now become a witness to the importance of advancing religious liberty all around the world. It's about religious liberty. Last year, my administration hosted the world's first ever meeting of foreign ministers devoted solely to the subject of international religious freedom. I want to thank all of you for joining us as we host this meeting for the second year in a row. A lot of uh, individual breakout meetings are being had, and we're getting a lot of ideas as to how we can help. In America, we've always understood that our rights come from God, not from government. In our Bill of Rights, the first liberty is religious liberty. Each of us has the right to follow the dictates of our conscience and the demands of our religious conviction. We know that if people are not free to practice their faith, then all of the freedoms are at risk. And frankly, freedoms don't mean very much. That's why Americans will never tire in our effort to defend and promote religious freedom. I don't think any president has taken it as seriously as me. Uh, I, to me, it's very important. It's uh, vital. It's really vital. And I just want to thank everybody very much for being with us today. You've been through a lot. And I think I can say it for everyone here. You've been through a lot more than most people could ever endure. And I want to congratulate you, because that's what you need, is congratulations. Uh, it's really an honor to be with you, and I will stand side by side with you forever. Uh, if I could ask Ambassador Brown back to say a few words, please. Yes. Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you and your administration for uh, your leadership on this. Last year was the first. This year is the largest meeting ever held in the world on religious freedom, just on this, devoted to this topic. And with you here today, we have a Nobel Peace Prize winner, Nadia Murad, who was taken by ISIS. Oh and uh, made into a, a, well, horrible situation that she's in. But she's been an outstanding advocate. And then we have helped, uh, this government has, in rebuilding northern Iraq, uh, the Yazidi and the Christian sure. area. Uh, of course, Andrew Brunson and I both, neither of us would be here if it wasn't for you. Uh, and uh, Andrew, you busted out of a Turkish uh, prison. This gentleman was at Christ Church uh, oh. in the shootings of the mosque that took place wow. uh, that was there. And you have really people, well, Miriam Ibrahim is here, was in a Sudanese jail while she was pregnant and had a death penalty uh, for her. But uh, people advocated for her around the world, and she and her child are alive uh, today. And that's just a few. That's good. That's great. That's just a few. You feeling story. good? Everything fine? Very well. Good. My children are very well. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Reverend Sampson was going to make a comment for the group. He's from Burma. He's Kachin Christian. Uh, and uh, they have suffered greatly there as well, and we've worked a lot with them. Reverend Sampson, you want to tell briefly your story? Yes. Yes, I, I'm uh, uh, president of Christian Baptist Convention from Northern Burma. Right. And then as Christian in Myanmar, we are very being uh, oppressed and uh, tortured by the Myanmar military government. So, and then we don't have chance many for religious freedom. And also as uh, uh, all ethnic armed groups fight against to the um, uh, central military government. So please, uh, the American government focus on the ethnic uh, people and the ethnic right. leader to get genuine democracy and federalism. It's very important for your health and your 
support. And then thank you very much for your thank sanction you. yesterday. Yes. So this is very helpful for yes, us. Yes, we did something. Thank you. thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Ambassador, so which is more important? You were the governor of a great state, a very, a very top state, in my opinion. Uh, and you're doing now something for religious liberty and freedom. Uh, which is tougher? Which is more important to you? I think, that of all the jobs I've had, I've been a congressman, a senator, a governor. Uh, this is the most important, because it's about billions of people. This, these, these folks here represent the faiths of billions of people around the world, and the United States is the, the main country, not the only, and many other allies are coming along, but we're the main country to stand up and fight for their religious freedom. And we're not picking a winner or a loser. We're just saying, look, you've got governments have to protect this right. And that's why, to me, I, this, this job uh, and what this administration is doing to protect it affects billions of people. And I'm, I'm, I think it's incredible. It's an incredible opportunity. So uh, when you say other countries are coming along, and some aren't coming along, I assume, right? Some are yes. not doing much. Uh, who are the good ones? I won't talk about the bad ones, because <laughs> I know who the bad ones are. Yeah, the, the British have been great. They've been putting out some reports uh, lately on uh, the persecution of people of faith, and they've stepped up more aggressively. UAE, United Arab Emirates, uh, hosted the first ever wow. papal visit on the Arabian Peninsula in the history of mankind. That's great. And they've been uh, they've been stepping up and doing uh, doing a lot uh, a lot more. So several the Europeans have been. The South Americans are starting to step up more. So well, we need more. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Paula White, could you say a few words, Paula? Yes, sir. So it's just, I'm from Tibet. I'm, I'm, it's my joy to visit this opportunity to visit uh, uh, President uh, Amishka. Um, Tibet need the, uh, inside the Tibet need the uh, Amishka support, please. Can you support His Holiness Dalai Lama? Support, yeah. Yeah. Uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama, when, um, come back in Tibet. My English is not good, no, it's but fine. thank it's you fine. so much for me this opportunity to gather, share with story. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And, and say hello. Please say hello, OK? Thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate thank it. You. And your English is actually very good. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm a Falun Gong practitioner. Uh, my husband now is still in prison. Uh, and the, yeah, and the force of organ harvesting still exists. So we should take um, action. Just the words, it can doesn't work. So how to how to do the section to the communist Chinese communist regime? And where is this now? Where? Uh, where is your husband a prisoner? Now my husband in Jiangsu, uh, Jiangsu province of Jiangsu and right. Suzhou uh, uh, pr uh, prison. And you know, um, uh, 2018, last year, yeah, last year, one of our practitioners, after three years uh, in prison, he uh, released uh, home, and just one day he died. And before that, he warming. Uh, a large amount of blood. Uh, you know, uh, you are. He, I, you I, said he died. Yeah, he died. Uh, another uh, another Falun Gong practitioner, uh, where uh, he is still uh, also in the Suzhou prison. So as uh, you know, I know uh, you are one young man from the North Korea came back to uh, uh, U.S. and several days after he returned and he died. Wow. Yeah, and you know, you know the regime. What, 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 what they do, so <clears throat> what should we take the uh, act? Yes, yeah, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. I no, appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank yourself. you. Paula? Well, uh, President, it's such an honor, and I just have to say on behalf of you and your courageous leadership, I have watched from day one and even before you took this office, you'd be a relentless fighter for people of all faith and religious liberty. Uh, we see it on stateside from you saying we can say Merry Christmas again to the DOJ, passing laws that no other administration could pass to give high holy days to all religions to be able to take off of work and to honor that, to, as Ambassador said, this is the second, but the largest in the world 
gathering for religious liberty freedom. You have taken a bold, courageous stand that many governments have moved. You have over 16 countries represented here. You have approximately 27 people, but I was in the room yesterday with thousands, and we had thousands that could not get in. So we thank you, President, for being the leader um, the courageous leader to stand up not only in our nation, but countries all around for all faith of all people, that we should have the practice and the right to practice our religion. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And they say and I did hear that they had thousands of people that couldn't get in yesterday. From all over the <laughs> That's world. That's incredible. Well, it may say make sure you get a much bigger room, I guess, or a tent <laughs> uh, or something. have to do something like yeah. that. It may say if you would. Yes, please. Mr. President, thank you from New Zealand. Thank you very much. Thank you for your leadership, standing up for humanity, standing for uh, standing up for uh, uh, religious groups and their rights, and uh, thank you thank you for uh, supporting us in the 15 March tragedy in Christchurch, and God bless you, and God bless United States. Well, thank you very much, and uh, you went through a lot. I know all about what happened, and that was a terrible situation. Thank you very much Thank for being here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. President, I'm Pakistan. Yes, please. And you are meeting our Prime Minister. That's true. Uh, Coming in next week. Right? Uh, I would be very grateful if you would raise with him the issue of persecuted Christians in Pakistan, the blasphemy law, okay. and people who are suffering under this law. Okay, Thank you so much. He's coming sir. in next week on Tuesday. Sir, yes, yes. Thanks, sir. I am from Bangladesh, and here is the uh, 37 million the Hindu, Buddhist, and Christian are disappeared. Please help us for Bangladeshi people. We want to stay in our Bangladesh. country. Yeah, still there is 18 million minority people. My request is, please help us. We don't want to leave our country. Just help us to stay. I have lost my home. Uh, they burned my home. They taken my land but no judgment yet taken place. Who Please. Took, who took the land? Who took the home and the land? Uh, the, fundamental, the Muslim fundamentalist group. And they are uh, always they are getting the uh, political shelter. Yeah. Always. I know Thank the president you. has to get on, so I want to. Uh, the, I don't everybody, mind. We, could, we could take a couple. Can okay, you? Yeah, okay, good. The helicopter the, uh, uh, has it landed? The helicopter? Have, have we landed out there yet? Huh? No. Come on. Can I say something? Uh, yes, please. One to three million Uyghur population are locked up in concentration camps in China, including my father. He's now serving life sentence in China. I haven't seen him since Where 2013. Is that? Where is that in China? That's in the west part of China. The region. In Chinese, it's called Xinjiang. Yeah. We call it Uyghur region. So far, we have how long, how long has your father been gone? He has been in jail for five years, and we don't know how long he will still be in there. Do you have any communication with him? I haven't heard about him since 2017, because so. that's when the concentration camp started. Anyone who goes to ask about anybody's family member's news will never make their way back to their own homes. Yes, yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Hi. So I am a Rohingya from Bangladesh refugee camp. So most of the refugee, Rohingya refugees are willing to go to go back home as quickly as possible. So what uh, what is a plan to help us? That's all. Thank you. Very much. And where is that exactly? Where? Bangladesh refugee camp. Bangladesh, right next to Burma. I see. The, yeah, the Rohingya have been run okay. out. Okay. Uh, Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yes, please. President, I am a Pastor Mario from Cuba. Yes. A blessing. Um, one pastor, Ramon Rigal, and his wife uh, uh, in prison in Cuba. Uh, please uh, pray for, for them um, and help the people in Cuba. Five pastors. Uh, the San Bromba invite for this event in Cuba and not here because the government in Cuba no permission for uh, for today here. I am here because I am refugee in the United States. Thank you for your hospitality for me. How has it been in Cuba without Castro? There's still a Castro there, but you have a new leader. How has that been? Any difference? No, it's not real. Castro okay. continue in the power because Castro is the first secretary to the uh, party, the Communist Party. And the new president is, uh, is not really. Uh, Castro uh, is the real leader, Continuo. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Please. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. For the opportunity to see you. I'm Esther from Nigeria. I do three years in Zambia. I escaped from Boko Haram to be with you. Thank you for your okay, That's tough stuff, right? Yes. That's a tough thing. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say one more? Yes, please. Go ahead. 
Thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm Il Young from North Korea. And first, I want to say really thank you. And then my aunt, all of my aunt family, Chu chun Kim Chol, Kim ji Hang, Kim sung Shik, all of them, they are in political prison camp now. Where? In, in, I don't know where is it. They, they, they just took it at the town. And just because of my aunt's father-in-law was a Christian, and my cousin's whole family were executed because of their sharing gospel. <clears throat> but even though, even though the persecution of Kim Jong Un, the North Korean citizens they are trying to, they are, they want gospel and they want to worship it now, and they are worshiping in underground church right now. And even though a few weeks ago we got a message from North Korean underground churches and they sent a the photo of the wood, and there are three of them gathered there, and they were praying for North, South Korea. And so those kind of things are happening in North Korea. I'll bring, I'll bring that up. I, so, understand, yeah. I understand exactly yeah, what you're saying. I'll bring it up. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Sorry. So I'm, I'm, I'm a yes, Nobel yes. Peace Prize winner. I'm from Iraq, and uh, I'm, I cannot say my family is there in the jail because when ISIS attack us, no one protect us. After 2003, we start to to disappear from our area, from our homeland. Uh, when ISIS attack us in 2014, they killed six of my brother. They killed my mom. They took me to captivity with my 11 sister-in-law, with all my sister and my nieces. Until today, we have 3,000 Yazidi women and children in captivity. The, Although they said ISIS is defeated, but where is those 3,000 Yazidi? And uh, our, our home is, is destroyed. We come to here, we go to Europe, we to go to Arab country that ISIS did this. Uh, everyone saw that. And we uh, appreciate. And you were Vice, captured? You yes. Were captured. Vice President, he helped us a lot. But now, today, you, you can solve our problem. Now there is no ISIS, but we cannot go back because Kurd Kurdish government and the Iraqi government, they are fighting each other who will control my area. And we cannot go back if we cannot protect our dignity, our, our uh, family. Um, but uh, we, we get a lot of support from President Macron. He push, he, la he put a lot of pressure in Iraqi and Kurdistan government to, to help minorities, Yazidi, to stay in their home. But we still continue to immigrate to find a safe place to live. I, right. I hope you can call or anything to Iraqi and Kurdistan government to. But ISIS is gone. But if I, if but I can. But now it's Kurdish and, and who? Iraqi. Iraqi government, if I cannot go to my home and live in a, a safe place and, and get my, like, my dignity back, this is not about ISIS. It's about I'm in danger. My people cannot go back. We are not a million of people. We are only half a million people. And after 2014, about 95,000 95, Yazidi, they immigrate to Germany through a very dangerous way, not because we want to be a refugees, but, but we cannot find a safe place to live. All this happened to me. They killed my mom, my sixth brother. They left behind them. Where are they now? They killed them. They are in the mass graves in Sinjar. And I'm still fighting just to live in safe. Please do something. And it's not about one family. I know the area very well you're it's, talking about. It's about half a million. It's, it's about tough. the whole yeah. community. OK. We're going to look into it very Thank strongly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And you had the Nobel Prize. Yeah. That's incredible. But they gave it to you for what reason? Make it explain. For what reason? For that after all this happened to me, I didn't give up. I, can, I, I, I make it clear to everyone that ISIS raped thousands of Yazidi women. This one was the first time the woman from Iraq, she get out and spoke about what happened to her. Oh, really? And Is that right? It's fa That's the first, first time. time. And it's, so you escaped? I escaped, but I, I, don't, I, I don't have my freedom I yet because you, you, you didn't see any ISIS in, in court. ISIS are. We don't know if they killed every day, everyone, if they are in, in jail. But we know we have 3,000 Yazidi women and children, including my niece, my nephew, my sister-in-law. Three years ago, she called us. She said, I'm in Syria. And now we didn't know anything about it. Let me look. We're going to look. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Yes, I am the survivor of the Holocaust, of a different era of persecution, right. and I have great sympathy and empathy with these people. That I'm very sorry to realize that things have not changed, that the persecution continues. Right. That's why we're putting such an emphasis on it, Mr. President, because yeah. there just is a lot of work to do in the world. But and we're and we're going to obviously we've got a lot yet to do. But we're pushing the effort. We're going to be announcing additional uh, measures. The Secretary of State is tomorrow. Uh, he's given a big speech. The Vice President's given a speech tomorrow right. about measures, and we're going to keep leading this charge. Well, thank you very much. Right. The world is a the world is a tough yeah. place. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, my name is Helen. I'm from Eritrea. I'm a gospel singer. Mm -hmm. So I have been for 32 months in metal shipping container because of my faith. But the reason I'm here, all our pastors, they are still in prison in Eritrea, include the patriarch, Abu Antonius. So that is my message. I'm voice for those voiceless. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. it. We pray for in you. a shipping container. Metal yeah. shipping container for 32, 32 months. 32 months. Hi. Uh, please. Hi. Uh, please. Uh, I am, I am from the Ahmadiyya Muslim community of Pakistan. In 1974, we were declared non-Muslims. Our houses and shops, shops were looted. Set on fire. I relocated. I was a salesman and then I was, uh, I was in prison for five years for selling books. I've been released after three years. We are peaceful. I can call myself a Muslim in the United States. States of America, but not in Pakistan. Otherwise, I'll be punished. We have never retaliated and left everything to God. God bless you and give you a long life. Thank you. So you see, the world is a tough place, and we're making strides. We've made some very good strides. Uh, Andrew is a Case in point, uh, Pastor Brunson, wherever you may be. Right here. And uh, so I appreciate it. How has everything been for you Very since well, you got out? I want to tell you, an Iranian woman told me today that you're fighting for me, the most powerful person in the world, fighting for someone who was not known at all, was an inspiration to many people, gave hope to many people around the world, and also many young Iranians. So thank you for that. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate President. it very much. Hi, Mr. President. I'm Iranian. Um, I'm a Christian minority from Iran. My family are being persecuted in Iran. Um, Iranian people are with you. The What's majority happening? of Iranian people. Explain what, what is happening in Iran. My parents are pastors. They're Christian pastors. Right. They've been arrested, all my family, my father, my mother, and my brother. They are free on bail, awaiting their trial and long sentences. My father is sentenced to 10 years in prison. My mother, five years. We still don't know about my brother. We would appreciate if you mention my family, but also Christian persecution in Iran in all the negotiation with our They're in jail for what reason? Because they're Christian pastors. pastors preaching the gospel. Yeah. 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 Vietnam, no I will. Thank I'm going to get the information. I will. Vietnam, yes. no freedom, no freedom, religion. I want to president uh, have uh, Vietnam have uh, Vietnam. freedom. Yeah. Vietnam. Yeah. Vietnam. Uh, have a uh, freedom religion. Vietnam uh, need, need uh, to CBC. I uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I think I understand. Thank you, thank, thank you, President. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
I know nothing about that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.